I've had my hands on Turtle Beach's latest offering in the headphone department for about three weeks. This headset will be available for public purchase May 8th at a retail price of $130 US dollars, sold on Amazon, Turtle Beach's website, as well as major vendors such as Best Buy. There will be three colorways available, black, midnight red, and arctic camo. And while this headset was sent out for an early review or preview, this is going to be an honest, comprehensive review. So if there's any cons or shortcomings, you're gonna hear about it. These headsets work wirelessly with a 2.4 gigahertz dongle on virtually every platform, Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, PC, Mac. These also support multiple surround sound technologies such as Windows Sonic, DTS, and Dolby Atmos. Although they work best with Windows Sonic as it is baked into Xbox consoles as well as Windows PCs. Also, the built-in microphone, which is flip up to mute, by the way, is literally one of the best microphones I have ever heard from a headset. Also, it's freakishly comfortable and the battery will last you for around 48 hours. Let's get it. When the Damascus steel blade doesn't do the job, sometimes you got to get in there with the deadly weapons that the good Lord gave you. So you do have a little silk or velvety silver pull tab on top, which pops it right open. You do have some basic cardboard or egg carton in here, keeping your headset in place. So no laser cut foam or anything like that. Now you do have your literature over here for a nice little easy read when you're sitting on the can. This is gonna be your documentation, your instruction manual. You are immediately greeted with a little notification that you want to update your headset to the latest firmware. I recommend doing that when you get any electronic item, a controller, headset, keyboard, mouse. If it has firmware, go ahead and update it to the latest patch. As these companies are constantly making their products better via software. Not much they can do for hardware if there's defects the comfort or anything like that, but they can add and improve on features via software. If you have any issues with your headset, they of course do have customer support, which I have heard is pretty good with Turtle Beach. I haven't personally needed to utilize it and hopefully I'd ever do, but I have heard good things about it. You do have a little Turtle Beach sticker here if you wanna go ahead and sticker bomb the took us of your car or maybe the side of your PC tower. Speaking of which, I just noticed my fans were on static red, gross. Let's get that rotating, there we go. Nice little backdrop there for you. You do have your 2.4 gigahertz dongle, which does have a little switch on here that says USB and then Xbox. However, as mentioned earlier, this will work with virtually all the platforms, which is awesome. We are gonna test that though by using this wireless dongle on a PlayStation 5, a Switch OLED, an Xbox Series S, an X, and of course a Windows 10 PC. You do have a USB-C cable. It is very short. I would say about a two-footer. It is also rubberized, not braided or microfiber, not very flexible and not very lightweight. So a very basic parts bin special USB-C cable, but this will do the job for charging. It is also branded on both sides with Turtle Beach stamped or blazed on there. And then you have your headset held in a little plastic bag to keep it free of dust and debris, which there is like some dirt or bark or something on the outside of that plastic cover. I guess it's better that it's on there than on the actual headset, but that's interesting. It's packaging is kind of kind of dear tay. And it looks like you also do have a little desiccant packet inside of the right ear cup, which is gonna keep this bad boy from molding when it's sitting on the warehouse shelves before it makes its journey to you. Make sure you dispose of these properly and your children and pets don't get a hand of it because it will rob their lungs of oxygen, which you don't want. You do have the Turtle Beach logo inside both the ear cups. And as you can see, they do rotate inward and outward. So if you wanna rest them around your neck like this, or put it on your desk without it sitting upward like that. They do rotate, which also does help with comfort, which we will talk about extensively as comfort is one of the major factors of what makes a headset good or a sack of poop. As for size adjustment, it is with a ratchet mechanism. It does have distinct steps in there and it is also labeled as well, where you can see I'm a two and a half on this side and I'm a three on this side. I guess you'd have kind of a lopsided head if that's the case. It does have a little window here with some measurements on there, which is very nice. As for the styling, I'm a fan. It's flat matte black, very minimal branding. There's no lime green plastered on here or anything. There is a Turtle Beach logo on the top, but overall it's a very sleek looking design that I think will go good with just about anybody's theme or setup. I will say the plastics do feel a little bit cheap and chintzy on the top here and on the sides. Okay, basically all the plastics don't feel the best, but granted what's important is how it feels comfort wise when it's on your noggin. Just grabbing it though, feels a little bit cheap. So on your right ear cup, you have absolutely nothing, no charge ports, no buttons, no mics. On the left side, this is where you have all of your controls. You are gonna have a power button, your USB-C plug, an LED light that will give you status indications when you're charging and also while you're using the headset. You do have a mode button here. This will swap through different EQ or equalizer modes as well as engage superhuman hearing, which is a patented feature of Turtle Beach headphones that I personally am not a fan of. What it does is it boosts up the mid-range frequencies so you can pinpoint footsteps, but it makes the sound profile sound incredibly unnatural 
natural and basically sounds like you're listening through a tin can because it's supposed to be targeting footsteps. However, if you just naturally play the game with a flat equalizer curve, you're going to be able to pinpoint footsteps by using situational awareness as where this tries to give you a not unfair advantage, but a little competitive edge, but it sacrifices the actual sound quality of the headset, spiking up the mid range and dipping down on the low and high frequencies. Not a huge fan, but some people love it and swear by it. And these do have that option. You do have a volume scroll wheel, which is rubberized. It doesn't have any distinct steps or anything, but I do like that it bottoms out at zero and tops out at a hundred. I recently tested a couple of headsets that have an infinitely spinning volume wheel, which I hate. You don't know when you're at zero unless you get a little beep or chime. You don't know when you're at the 50% mark. It just spins and spins. I would like if there was a little distinct step or notch at the 50% mark. Same thing with the game and chat blend over here, which is the bottom scroll wheel. It does top out and bottom out. And they do have a nice rubberized coating on there. I do like that. Also, these ear cups have a little break right here where they are going to rotate inward and outward a few degrees. The microphone is flip up to mute. We are going to test that later in this video. And interesting, you have a little plastic sticker in here. Not really sure why. That's an intro maybe to keep it from scratching during shipment, but obviously there's no fingerprints or anything in here. Also, as far as collecting fingerprints and micro scratches, you don't really have to worry about it with this headset because it is flat matte black. It doesn't have any of that gloss piano black that you know I don't love. As for the ear cushions, they are memory foam and they are gel infused and they have this moisture wicking material, which will do a good job of dissipating heat in long gaming sessions so you don't start sweating out of your ear holes. Now these are replaceable. However, they're not magnetized and quick release, which I really do like those. These you have to peel them off like this, which as you saw, wasn't very hard to get them off. Getting them back on though, you have a little lip or trough as you can see right there, hopefully. And you need to get this leather lip right here in that trough. And they can be kind of a beast to get back in as opposed to magnetized ones that just snap in and out. But getting a good look at these 50 millimeter neodymium drivers, they look incredibly high quality and that generally correlates to a good sound profile from these drivers. They are 50 millimeter, which is a good size. That's kind of the sweet spot. Although there are some good 40 millimeter drivers on the market as well. All right, give me about an hour. I'm going to get these ear cups back on. I probably shouldn't have taken these off. That was a bonehead move on my part. There we go. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. I don't want to damage this thing before I get the review out. Well, technically I don't want to damage this thing period. But basically you're going to get that. Oh, oh geez. Oh boy. Basically you're going to get that leather in that trough there and just work her around. Work her over one time. It's a little bit elastic, so you can stretch her a bit. So as for comfort, that is gonna come down to three factors. The weight of the headset, which feels relatively light. Let's see if she's been skipping any meals. 10.5 ounces. And then also the quality of the ear cups, which again, we know that these are memory foam and gel infused, cooling gel infused, I should say. And then also the headband, if it has any clamping force around your temples. And then the quality of the head strap or padding around the top of your dome. So they are very comfortable. You do get a good amount of passive noise cancellation since these are sealed back headphones. They are going to completely seal up over your ears. So it cuts out a lot of the noise for my PC fans and whatnot. These ear cups are comfortable. Also, the headset is firmly affixed to my face, even when I'm headbanging and jerking around. Not that I really do this while I'm gaming, but it's on there very good, yet it doesn't have any clamping force around my temples, which is very nice. Headband is also very squishy and feels like memory foam. It does respond quite easily to my inputs and then snap back to its original form. So flip up to mute microphone. It is a shorty, a little snub nose here. So it's up and out of your way. I barely see it out of my peripherals, so that's great. It does rotate inward and outward. However, it's hard plastic, so it's not flexible. Awesome. We'll test that in a bit. So the software program you need to control these headphones is called Turtle Beach Audio Hub. If you Google it, it will take you to this page, which is turtlebeach.com forward slash audio hub. It shows the headphones that are usable in this application, and you can install this for Windows or Mac. So it's imploring you, please connect a Turtle Beach device. We can't do anything for you if you don't have a headset. So I'm going to plug this into the front of my tower. I'm going to switch it to USB mode, which by the way, is what you will use plugging into a PS4, 5, or Nintendo Switch. I'm I'm using a USB 3.0 port over a 2.0 just in case for highest means of data transfer. Your headset consists of both the transmitter and headset. Make sure the headset's on. It's not currently. So powering this on for the first time, see if it has any juice out of the box. You are going to hold down the power button for two seconds. You got a nice little pleasant chime and the LED lights on the bottom will begin to flash. She is now paired to the transmitter as it goes solid green on this LED. Fits over glasses very well. Granted, these are just blue lights, but if you have some sunglasses on because your gameplay is so hot or you have prescription 
lenses because you don't have the eyes of an eagle. These feel totally fine wearing glasses. And it recognizes my device is Stealth 600X Gen 2 Max. Shows you your software and firmware. If you do have an update available, it will be right here. You can also adjust your mic monitoring level as well as your audio tones, which is when you make adjustments to the equalizer. It will give you a little beep or chime and you can control the volume of that. But there is no updates available, which does not surprise me considering this is a brand new device. In fact, it's not even released to the public yet, so it should have the latest and greatest firmware. It's not like a three-year-old headset you picked up at a closeout sale because it's being phased out or anything like that. So unfortunately, as I'm scrolling the volume wheel up and down, it is not affecting Windows volume whatsoever, which I am not a huge fan of. So you need to keep these at 100 and then adjust them on the headset or keep them at 50 on the headset and use your Windows keys on your keyboard to adjust volume. I do wish it was controlling Windows volume as opposed to having to control two separate volume levels and balance them out. Now, when you plug in this headset, it will automatically default your PC output to these speakers as well as the input, your microphone. So if you're going to be using a USB or XLR microphone on a boom arm or something, you're a streamer or YouTuber, then you are going to choose your regular microphone here. However, let's do a microphone test. Currently, I'm using my Go XLR for sound. However, if you go to settings over here, go to the audio tab and then switch this over to microphone stealth 600 long name this is a microphone test with the included microphone on board the turtle beach headset i can hear my voice in the ear cups because it does have microphone monitoring on now this is an audio test with the microphone tilted inwards towards my mouth the inward setting and this is the outward setting let's see if there's any kind of compressor to amplify my quiet sounds or minimize or reduce my loud sounds there probably isn't i'm talking bit quietly because I'm listening for footsteps and escape from Darkov. And now I'm getting loud, baby, because I just busted a 360 no scoop. Clearly not. I could see from my audio levels that it was absolutely demolishing your eardrums. But you can actually add your own compressor, equalizer, and noise gate inside of OBS by clicking on this cog icon right here and going down here to filters and hitting the plus icon. You can see right there, you've got a compressor that will fix where it was not amplifying my quiet sounds or minimizing or reducing my loud sounds. So if you're going to be using this microphone, to stream or capture YouTube content, I would recommend using a compressor, an equalizer, and a noise gate, which I have done tutorials on in the past. That video will be linked in the description below. Now, other than the Turtle Beach Audio Hub updater, which we installed and previewed just a second ago, there is no software suite for this headset, which isn't a huge deal because all of the controls are done on board the headset, such as swapping through equalizer modes and turning supersonic hearing on and off. Supersonic? Superhuman. I think I was thinking supersonic because these headphones do support Windows Sonic, which brings me to my next point, which is that these do have virtual surround sound, but it is Windows Sonic, which isn't bad. This article basically summarizes it perfectly that Windows Sonic is included or integrated in every Windows 10 and 11 PC, as well as Xbox One and series consoles. So it's the best spatial audio that you're going to get, and it's kind of the golden standard, but just that standard. There are other surround sound technologies out there that are usually better. And to make sure that this is engaged on your headset, which currently it is not, you are going to right click on the little speaker icon or logo at the bottom right. You are going to go to spatial sound, which as you can see is off, and you are going to select Windows Sonic for headphones. As you can see, Dolby Atmos and DTS are right here, but it says try or buy from Microsoft Store. You can buy the software. However, if you purchase a headset that has those technologies, you will get these for free as you just install the software. Gordon Freeman. That's me. So good stereo spread there as I'm turning my head away from the audio source of the guy talking. Checkpoints, we should be okay. That actually does sound like it's gonna slightly go behind me. Enough. You're going to have to make your own way to Dr. Kleiner's lab. Oh, man, that's what I was afraid of. This can right here, you want me to pick this one up? How about I throw it at you? Whoa, whoa, watch out. Whoa, he's still on me. Sincerely. A concerned That's right, you better walk back to your post. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's immersive. So there is no input lag or delay to speak of. Firing the gun, there's no lag between the time I see the gunshot go off and when I hear it. Grant, that is a very rudimentary way of measuring lag. I don't have a tool for it or anything, but according to my superhuman ears over here, all right, let's give them the business, boys. Let's lay down the law. Couldn't see you, but I could smell you. Accuracy was a little off. Whoa, where'd you come from there, buddy? 
Taking headshots like a cameraman. Now we're going to turn off the uh, spatial audio or Windows Sonic. Station 12, come in. Station 12, Sounds much better with it on. As for controls on the Turtle Beach headset, there is virtually nothing on the right ear cup, so all of your controls are going to be on the left over here. This is where you have your microphone. That is flip up to mute, and it will mute if you are in this halfway position, and then definitely when you are up like that. Now, to power on or turn off the headset, you are going to hold down the power button for around two seconds. When the headset is on, if you just quickly tap the power button, that is going to turn superhuman hearing on and off. Go ahead and just leave it off. Just my opinion. Then the button aptly named mode is going to switch through four equalizer modes on the fly. One beep in the headset means you are in signature sound, which is a flat equalizer curve. So if you want to hear the most natural, organic, true to what the content is supposed to sound like, you can leave it in a flat equalizer mode called signature sound. 80% of the time, that is what I use. Two beeps means you are in bass boost mode, which sure enough is going to boost up the low frequencies and it does sound good. It thickens up the bass without overpowering the mids or treble. Three beeps means you are in bass and treble boost, so it is going to boost the low and high frequencies, does nothing to the mids. And then mode four, you will hear four concurrent beeps in the headset that is going to be vocal clarity boost which boosts up the frequencies of spoken word dialogue 90 percent of the time when i'm using a turtle beach headset or the recon controller which has the same equalizer modes in that little audio block that you plug into i keep it in signature sound mode with superhuman hearing off a close second for me would be bass and treble boost because i think it adds a lot of peak brightness and clarity in the highs and gives you that nice thunderous booming bass for things like gunshots and explosions i'm not a huge fan of the bass boost mode and i I blatantly do not like the vocal clarity mode. It is meant to boost up dialogue, but it just sounded rather unnatural to me. Then you have two scroll wheels. The bottom one is going to be for microphone monitoring when you are in the PC mode. And when you are in Xbox mode, this is gonna be for your chat game blend. So how loud your gameplay is in comparison to your buddies in Xbox chat. Now keep in mind that the microphone monitoring is only for the onboard microphone. You're not gonna be able to monitor something like this XLR microphone. It's obviously the headset microphone that you're monitoring. And then last but certainly not least, you have your volume wheel, which does top out at the top and bottom out at the bottom. So as for the pros and cons of this headset, let's start with the cons, get those out of the way because there is less of them. First of all, there is no 3.5 millimeter port on this headset. So you have to use these wirelessly, which granted a lot of gamers, myself included, have made the full transition to wireless headsets to where this isn't a big deal for me. But if you're somebody that prefers to go wired, it's not an option. But luckily, one of the things we're going to cover during the pros is that that wireless adapter, that USB dongle works with virtually all platforms. Next up, the ear cups are comfortable. However, they're not magnetized, which is a much better design for getting them on and off. Next up, the software suite, if you want to call it that, is a little bit lackluster. The program is actually just to get you to install the updates or the new firmware. It doesn't have a whole hell of a lot of control. As you can see, there were two sliders for mic monitoring, but not a whole heck of a lot in the means of fine tuning equalizer. That is all done on board the headset. It'd be kind of nice if they had a little software suite where you could tinker with the settings. And lastly, I wish these got just a skosh louder. There were a couple of times that I maxed out the headset for testing purposes and it wasn't uncomfortable and not just that I wish they got it just a little bit louder just a skosh maybe like 10 to 15 percent more peak volume would be ideal now for the pros because there is a shitload the battery life is insane the box and website tout 45 plus hours I have yet to use this headset enough to put my stamp of approval on that claim but if that is true or if it's even close anything above 40 hours is astronomically long battery life for a wireless headset next up big props to the internal microphone granted it doesn't sound as good as something like this X LR microphone. However, for a headset microphone, that is one of the best headset microphones I've ever heard. Generally, it sounds like you're underwater or you're talking into a baked potato or you're yelling through a pillow or you're Michael Phelps, you're underwater trying to talk to your coach or something or you're lost in space. These actually sounded pretty legible. You could definitely get away using this for comms. Next up, this is a very, very comfortable headset. I did wear this for a rather long gaming session on the Series X and then moved straight over to the Nintendo Switch and then jumped to the PS5 with these, basically keeping them on my head the entire time. My ears didn't become hot or sweaty. I really do like these ear cups. I like the headband mechanism. Overall, just a very comfortable headset. Also, cosmetically, I think this is a very good looking headset. It is flat matte black with these small Turtle Beach logos on each side and their branding on the top. Very good looking headset. Next up, this has a proper volume wheel that actually bottoms out at zero and tops out at 100 instead of those infinitely spinning volume wheels like I've seen on some headsets recently. And the next pro is actually the biggest and best feature of this headset, in my opinion, and that is the 
fact that this works wirelessly on every single platform. I can't really recall off the top of my head the last time I've seen a headset with that kind of compatibility. A wireless headset, I should say. Of course, wired is going to work with anything with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. You just pop it in the bottom of your controller and you're good to go. This works with the 2.4 gigahertz dongle, which by the way is completely lag free. I was unable to detect any kind of delay or lag. And by putting it in USB mode, it works on the Switch, PlayStation 5, Series S, Series X, Windows 10, Mac. The next pro, this headset obviously comes with Windows Sonic as that is baked into Windows and the Xbox platforms, but you can also use this headset with DTS and Dolby, as well as the 3D spatial audio on board the PlayStation. Those are the Tempest audio engines, which are meant to work with the Pulse 3D headset. However, I've kind of got a caveat that, that this headset is really only meant for Windows Sonic. And while it can support those other technologies, the drivers aren't tuned specifically for each one of those surround sounds, as there are headsets that literally only do one of those surrounds. Like, hey, this headset's meant for DTS. Hey, the Pulse 3D headset for PlayStation 5 is meant for the PlayStation Spatial Audio. Or recently, the Haymaker headset I tested is meant for Dirac 7.1. That headset's designed for that surround technology, as where this is just like, hey, we'll we'll do the best we can with all these surround technologies available, but it's meant for Windows Sonic, as that is what 90% of people that get this headset are going to use, considering you have to pay out of pocket for a software program to unlock all those surrounds, because this isn't a authorized headset for those technologies. For example, I'm in Dolby Access, which is the Dolby Control Suite or software program on Windows 10, and this headset is not being recognized. You could purchase a license for $15 here, but if the headset is a license, Dolby Atmos headset, then this would automatically detect that headset and unlock the program for you. So it can use DTS, Dolby, and the Tempest audio engines on the PS5 and do as well as it can and probably really good, but it's basically meant for Windows Sonic, which isn't terrible. I mean, Windows Sonic is still spatial audio. When I was playing Half-Life, I still felt like I was immersed in the game world. So what is my verdict? Well, for the $200 price point, I would have to say that this is a good option for headphones, and here is why. Instead of having to get a separate headset for Xbox and PC, and then PlayStation and PC, and maybe your Nintendo and PC. This works with all platforms. That's awesome. Very few headsets, actually, I can't even think of any off the top of my head, that do that wirelessly. So that's awesome. Two, the out-of-the-box sound profile is very good. You keep it in signature mode with superhuman hearing off. Sounds great. It is freakishly comfortable. It looks good. The battery life is stupid long. And the onboard microphone is very good for what it is, a headset mic. The only thing that would push this headset into the next realm of awesomeness that would make it a for sure, hey, you gotta get this headset right now, is if it had some kind of a dock station like the Asteroid 50s have, because that would allow you to plug it into a mixer like the Go XLR, making this a much more viable option for streamers and YouTubers that have an XLR mixer and wanna be able to monitor all of their PC sounds, so their voice, their Discord chat, their their game sound, their music platform like Spotify, all with separate sliders on their mixer, all monitored on their wireless headset. There's only like five wireless headsets on the market right now that will work with a mixer because they have a little dock, a base station that has an audio out that you can plug into your mixer. With their next version or iteration of this headset, if they were to have some kind of a dock for that functionality, maybe a little charger dock that you can cradle it in, that would be awesome. And I do look forward to getting some more time with them and trying to kill the battery because that seems like quite a task. 45 plus hours. Hours. If you're looking for my stamp of approval, you've got it. That was corny. This is a good headset, though. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, as well as honest gaming product reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. There are some hefty exclusive discount codes found only in the description of my videos and only for the audience here at Gamer Heaven. Check out Into the AM for some of the sickest looking and most comfortable cloth to ever grace my gaming giblets. If you don't want to be scorching your corneas with harmful blue light, check out Gamer Advantage, the only blue light glasses on the market that look sexy and actually work. If you're looking for a custom controller that'll blow the competition's tits back, AIM definitively has the best bang for buck or price to performance when it comes to Xbox, PlayStation, and Switch controllers. Nope, they don't do Switch, but they do do gaming mice. I said doo-doo. I have links to all my other platforms and socials in the description below. If you need a quick laugh or blast of gamer adrenaline, check my short form videos out at TikTok. To get in touch with myself, and the stallions and stallionettes of Gamer Heaven, join the community Discord, and check me out at twitch.tv where I go live every other leap year on a blue moon if it falls into an odd calendar number and my pH balance is on point. Just kidding, starting June, I'm going to be live streaming a lot. Thanks for watching. This has been AK40 Kevin hosting Gamer Heaven, and I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily, all the time, 60% of the time, sometimes, most of the time. Peace.